today's session. Can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer, please? Jafina, can I request you to please lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Dear Heavenly Father, we commission in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this beautiful, very amazing class that we are about to have. Lord, we request the Holy Spirit to fill us with wisdom and the understanding to fill our heart as we learn and hear to every message that our man is speaking about. Everything that we learn in our class today, let us apply it in our life and let us shine bright in this world and let us be a light to this world and everyone who looks at us let them look into you and let them find you as we learn all these things let us apply it in our life and live for your glory each and every minute in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. amen. thank you so much so yes uh, i hope everyone have the notes of the book of daniel and also uh, we can turn to our scripture i'll just start the presentation Give me a minute while I put the presentation up. Okay. So who's the author of the book of Daniel? Who's the author? The, the name is, I mean, the book is named after the person who wrote it. So Daniel himself is the author. And this book was written approximately in 537 BC. And this book has only 12 chapters. Um, yeah. So we'll see the background of this book of Daniel. The background is this book was written uh, in time of exile in Babylon during the 6th century BC, uh, where it is also noted in 2 Kings chapter 24. We, we saw that in the first wave, uh, they had plundered the city of Jerusalem and its temple and taken away uh, you know, a, a bunch of Israelites into exile. And that time, Daniel was one among them. And he was a young nobleman of about 17 years old, just like Ezekiel had taken into captive to the Babylon during the uh, rule or reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. Being a young man from a prominent family, he was picked for government service in, his, uh, in this Gentile nation through uh, yeah, through God's favor and blessing, with his abilities, he rose to the position of prime minister of Babylon. And we also see Daniel was a very close confidant of uh, Nebuchadnezzar throughout the Babylonian king's reign. And Daniel continued to serve in this high position even after King Nebuchadnezzar's reign. Well, the like how God works out his purpose through his servants, even in the courts or even in the place where the pagan rulers are there. This book was written by him and it is called as the Apocalypse of the Old Testament. Uh, and, um, you know, we will be briefly studying upon this book and uh, we have a subject called Eschatology, the study of end times, where in detail we will be studying on the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. So, don't worry, all your questions will be answered and uh, the revelation of all the dreams will be interpreted and explained in detail because in this 50 minute of class, I don't think we can cover each and every dream, vision and its meaning. But then I will do my best to briefly explain them. Well, uh, it contains, this book contains many dreams, vision and prophecies concerning the future uh, uh, Gentile nations and also the nation of Israel and the end of the age well the book can be uh, broken down into three parts three parts i'll just move it yeah okay even before i can go uh, go to the three part yeah chapter one 
is been written in Hebrew. And chapter 2 to 7 is written in Aramic. The, uh, the, uh, the Hebrews who were living those days also knew uh, uh, another language, that is the Aramic language. So it is written 2 to 7 in Aramic. And again, chapter 8 to 12 in Hebrew. Yes. Yeah, and uh, one second. Yeah, so chapter one describes the destruction of Jerusalem and its captive and exile and chapter two to seven gives us a record, gives us a record of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and uh, Bel Belshazzar, his son, his dream and their interpretation by Daniel. And in chapter eight to 12, it contains a vision to the future kingdom. <clears throat> and their rulers and 70 weeks of prophecy and a precise timeline of when the Messiah would come. So it comforts us that our hope uh, in salvation is sure, uh, but that our faith must endure a while longer. With that, we will move on to the key characters of where the four men Okay, these are the key char characters uh, of the four men from the royal family of David. Uh, first is uh, the Hebrew name. There are Hebrew names and the uh, Babylonian names that has been given to uh, to the four people. That is Belteshazzar, the Babylonian name. His name is Daniel and Shadrach. And Ananiah is his Hebrew name. Meshach, Mishael is his Hebrew name. And Abednego is Azariah. Well, with this, we will move on. So what does this book tell us? It tells about the struggles that they went through. Not only them, but all the Israelites who were in the exile in the Babylon, they went through. And there was a hope in the land of the conquerors. And the book design seems pretty simple at first. Well, uh, in chapter 1 to 6 contains the stories about Daniel and his friends in Babylon while chapter 7 to 12 contains the visions of Daniel about the future. But this two-part shaped is made even more interesting by another uh, design future, and that's the book's language. It begins in Hebrew, as we discussed, and then the language of the Israelites, and then chapter 2 to 7, it's written in Aramaic. Well, and then back to Hebrew. And this design shows how chapter 2 to 7 are coherent section but it is also the highlight the important chapter two to seven for understanding the later chapters of the book so let's begin with chapter one from our bible uh, well here it introduces the basic attention of the first half of the book and uh, daniel and his friends they are really wise and capable and they were recruited to serve in this royal palace of Babylon, and uh, they are pressured to give up their Jewish identity by living and eating like the Babylonians and violating the Jewish food, the laws. Uh, but then uh, uh, Daniel and his friend try to keep up their um, uh, their identity through the practice what they they were living like the food food and uh, the prayer style they try to maintain that they abided by the torah even if they were living in a pagan land so they refused uh, uh, refused to eat like how the babylonians eat and they chose to be faithful to the torah and put uh, and um, because they were faithful to the Torah, it actually they got into trouble, they got into danger, but then they trusted God. When they trusted God, God delivers them and they end up being elevated in the king of Babylon. So as we read, we will come across that. Um, Yeah, uh, we uh, uh, we see in chapter two. So uh, the first king of Babylon, that is King Nebuchadnezzar, has a dream, and it turns out 
uh, you know, only uh, Daniel is able to interpret it. When we read it, that no wise men of the Babylon were able to interpret. I mean, uh, the king uh, uh, declared, saying that you have to uh, tell us. You need to tell me the dream that I had on my bed and also interpret that dream. So it was something very difficult for the wise men, for the astrologers uh, of that place to interpret or. So, can I request one of us to please turn to chapter 2? Chapter 2, read from fourteen to eighteen or fourteen to nineteen. Yeah. Daniel chapter two was fourteen. Tonight. The captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon, he answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, Why is it known to Daniel? So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time, that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, they, that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning the secret, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. So what we read here is Daniel seeked God. He took time from the king and he seeked God. When he seeked God and he prayed, God revealed the dream and the vision. What Daniel had the access those days, do you think that you and I would not have it today? Friends, we have it today. Even when we seek God for his wisdom, for the revelation of his word, for the greater things God reveals to us in dreams and visions because that is what he said in the end days I'll pour out my spirit on the young and the old and they shall see dreams and visions when we see God he will reveal to us just like how God revealed the dream and the interpretation to Daniel the same God is not a partial God is faithful enough to reveal the secret and the hidden things to you and me because we are his inheritance we are his children well as we come down from verse 25 can i request someone to read from 25 to 35 please or uh, yes we'll read from 25 to 28 later we will read 34 to 38 verse 25 then ario hurriedly brought Daniel into king's presence and spoke to him as follows. I have found a man among the exiles from Judah who can make interpretation known to the king. The king said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel answered before the king and said, as for the mystery about which the king has required, inquired, neither wise men Conjurers, magicians, or diviners are able to declare it to the king. However, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the latter days. This was your dream and the visions in your mind while you're while on your bed. Uh, Amen. Do we read till 30? 28, 28. 28, days, okay. 28. yeah. So we see that uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar was a very cruel and a crafty king and he demanded the wise men of Babylon okay, to tell him both the dream and its interpretation. So how we can, um, and also uh, evil, those who tell the dream and the interpretation, we see that there is a reward, there is a gift and a reward for that. But then if they do not interpret and tell the dream, There is death. He asked the wise men of the Babylon to be put to death. He asked the soldiers to put the wise men of the Babylon to be put to death. And here, when Daniel hears about that, he takes time. He takes time and he seeks God. We see, when he seek God, when he prayed, Lord answered him. And though Daniel was only 17 years old, we um, 
uh, you know, when we see God, God answers him. We are uh, never too young or too old to tap into that God's wisdom. Wisdom comes from, or uh, I mean, comes from the Lord to everyone who seeks and asks earnestly, because that's what we read in James chapter one verse five. Says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given. And it does not come from my experience, but from God. When we see God, He reveals it. And that is how He revealed it to Daniel. We see that, and then <clears throat> Daniel reveals the secret. He explains the dream. He explains the dream how, because he has received that from God. He has received that from God. Uh, I'll just change the slide. Give me a minute. So we see the image of Daniel. Uh, we see this is the image that the king had in the dream, and uh, Daniel goes ahead and explains about this image. He says, uh, "This image head was a fine gold. It denotes the Babylonian kingdom. The God of heaven has given you a kingdom, you King Nebuchadnezzar, and you are this head of gold." And then he moves on to the next, that is the Persian kingdom, that is which is in silver. Its chest and the arms of silver. He says, after your kingdom, there is another kingdom shall rise. Another kingdom shall rise inferior to yours. And then its belly and the thighs of bronze. Then there's another kingdom, the third kingdom of bronze, which is the Greece, the Greek, and they shall rule over all the earth. And then we see its legs. Legs are made out of iron. And uh, uh, that is the Roman kingdom, which will rule. And its feet, partly of iron and partly of clay. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. And that kingdom will be broken in pieces and crush all the others. Well, the toes. We come to the toes now, which is made out of clay and iron. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdom, and it shall stand forever. And also, we see that in uh, verse thirty-four. Can I request someone to uh, read verse thirty-four and thirty-five, please? Thirty-four, you continued looking until the stone was cut out without hands, and it struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay, and crushed them. Then the iron, the clay, and the the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed all at the same time, and became like a chaff from the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, so that not a trace of them was found. But the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, John, for reading. Well, as we watch, as you watch, there was a stone cut out without hands that came. So, which is that stone that struck and destroyed all the four kingdom? Which is that stone, and who is that stone? It's talking about. Jesus. Yes, the stone in New Testament, which we see, which was rejected by everyone, and that became the chief corner stone. The rock. Jesus is that rock which can destroy all the other kingdom. Well, the New Testament reveals that Jesus preached the establishment of God's kingdom. And also, we see John the Baptist also preach, saying that the kingdom of God is at hand. 
Since the church and the kingdom are one and same, we see that in the Gospels. And the church was established in the first century during the days of the Roman Empire. And it follows that the kingdom of God was established in the first century following the earthly ministry of Jesus. The church, the kingdom is comprised of people from all nations. And thus it consumes all these kingdoms, which is spoken in this chapter. And is spoken of in the New Testament and having been in existence during the first century AD. Well, this kingdom still exists today. And all sinners can choose to become part of it by being immersed in Jesus Christ. By receiving him as the Lord and Savior of our life. As the head of the church is Jesus and he is the king of kings, is now reigning over his kingdom and over his people, which has been shared about this in the gospel and also in the book of Acts chapter 2. We see that. And with this, what we also see is how it is compared. You see something degrading from the value of itself throughout we see the head is of gold and then the breast and arms are in silver. So which has more value, gold or silver? Gold or silver? Gold. Gold has more value. And then we see silver and brass. Which has more value? Yeah, you all can unmute and answer, please. Silver. Silver. And then brass and iron, which has more value? Brass. And then uh, 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 iron and clay, which has more value? Iron. And then it's clay. So you see it is degrading. Something that has been started by man may come up very well, but then it goes degrading. But remember, anything that has been started by God remains good and gets better and better and better. It raises from glory to glory, strength to strength. So we need to seek God. We need to seek God, just like how Daniel and his friends seeked God. No matter they were in the pagan land with their culture, but then they stayed themselves from away from all those culture and uh, all those activities. But then they seeked God every day in their life. They practiced Torah. They kept, they were faithful to Torah. This is just the image to show the stone. I'll be back to the slides. So we see how Daniel could interpret the dream to king and give him the understanding. And with this, Daniel became the prime minister of Babylon. And it's about, uh, uh, yes, Daniel says that the statue represent a train of human kingdoms following from Babylon, and they will fill God's world with violence. The Lord Jesus is the stone in the dream that struck the image and the kingdom of Christ will be established as an everlasting kingdom and that will confront and humble the arrogant kingdom of this world and fill the world with the healing justice of God's reign and rule, which talks about this. This stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. With this, we will move on to chapter 3. So in chapter 3, we see that uh, it talks about the very famous story of Daniel, three friends who refused to bow down uh, before, uh, bow down and worship this huge idol statue, uh, something uh, similar to which uh, uh, the, uh, the King Nebuchadnezzar had the dream. So the three Hebrews showed strong faith when they chose to trust God, regardless of whether or not he would deliver them. Sometimes uh, we think that God may not deliver us from our trouble, but he's faithful enough to keep his promise that he will be with us. He will walk through, through the adversity and he will deliver us. 
That's what we read in Deuteronomy. Can I request one of us to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30 and 31? And the other, please turn to Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, please. It's Deuteronomy chapter 4, reference. Verse 30 and 31. Verse 30 and 31, okay. Yes, please. When you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days, when you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, for the Lord your God is a merciful God, he will not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swore to them. Amen. Amen. Next, 31, verse 6, please. 6 and 8. Verse 6. Be and strong eight. and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Verse 8. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Amen. He will never fail you nor forsake you. Fear not, nor be dismayed. What a promise. Not only God is talking to Daniel's three friends, but God is also talking to us today. As we may face such trials, may not be fiery furnace, but in different areas, different situations may be as hard as this. But then the promise is the promise for you and I. Whoever believes in Jesus, we have the access to this promise that we are not alone. We are never alone. These three Hebrew friends who abided by the teaching of Torah, they kept it. They knew the God. We, we read that, uh, you know, um, I'll just give you the scripture. Just give me a minute. Yeah, uh, verse uh, chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, it says, The people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. We should know our God. The relationship, the fellowship that we have with our God gives us that courage, gives us the strength. Hey, no matter what happens around us, God is with us and we will have our victory. We should have this relationship with God, the relationship that Daniel and his friends had with God. No matter what, despite the situation, we will be with God. Just imagine they have been, <clears throat> they have been <clears throat> persecuted and were thrown into the fiery furnace. But God was with them to deliver them. And during the situation, you see the invisible God. That is the presence of God, which they had with them always, now has become visible during the time of trial. You see that? The invisible God, which was the presence with them, started to become visible during the time of trial. When we look back in our own life, the difficult situations that we are, we have gone through or we went through, can we see the hand of God during that situation where God become, became more tangible to us? His presence became so much visible to us that he became the fourth person in the fiery furnace, just like them. And the king and the others could see with their eyes. It was no more three people moving in that fire, but four. They could see that. And also the scripture says, not even the hair was burnt. Nothing happened. They walked out of the fiery furnace. Uh, you know, the king called them out because they saw the fourth person. They who was that person? And nothing happened to them. They were no more, uh, they were not crying or uh, weeping or screaming out of pain or burnt. But then, they were just walking with the fourth person. So God was with them to save them from the death. And now the king who watched that brought them out and they were exalted. And the king 
acknowledges that they God is the true one. They God is the true one. How beautiful is that, isn't it? Even the place we are, no matter where we work, in our workplace, in our office, in our family, no matter what trials we may go through, when we trust God, He becomes more visible to us and to the people around us. People say that they will acknowledge with their words, like, your God has saved you. Many instances, even I have seen that God becomes more prominent. He becomes the third person, I mean, the fourth person. And He brings us through. Now, with this, we will move on to the next uh, chapter 4 and 5. And after this comes a pair of stories about two Babylonian kingdom. And uh, yes, the father Nebuchadnezzar and his son Belshazzar. They both are filled with pride because of their imperial power. And so like in chapter 2, God wants them both through the dream and then the vision. Just like the chapter 2. So only Daniel can interpret it again. So he says that both kings are to humble themselves before God and both kings are arrogantly resisted. So what happens? So God strikes the king Nebuchadnezzar with madness. He loses his mind and he becomes like the beast in the field. He goes out in the field and he eats the grass. But then later there's a time when he humbles himself before God and he acknowledges it and asks for forgiveness and repents for his sin. God gives him the understanding. He receives the understanding. And he's been restored as king. So this is in contrast with his own son, Belshazzar, who doesn't humble himself before God. And he was assassinated that very night. Now these two stories, I've just cut short to make us understand. Draw the imaginary uh, from the Genesis chapter 1 and 2 and Psalms 8, where Humans are depicted as a royal image of God, and he has given them the authority to rule over the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, on behalf of God. And who is the world's true king? And the human kingdom forgets that. And when they rebel and make themselves and, uh, you know, and uh, they power into God's image, they become less than human. Like the violent beast, so they have to face God's justice. With this, we will move on to chapter 6. <clears throat> yes, which brings us uh, into, uh, into the pair of chapter 3. And this time it's Daniel who's been persecuted because he refuses uh, to pray and worship the king as a god. And so, like the friends, he's sentenced to death and he's thrown into lion's den thrown into lion's den. But God delivers him from the beast and just like the, how he delivered the friends. We will move on. I'll just put that image. God delivered him supernaturally because he trusted on God. He said, Lord, no matter what it is, I know you are with me. See, what attitude we see with his friend, with Daniel and his three friends, and later also in the New Testament, we see the same kind of attitude among the, uh, the disciples of Jesus. And very beautifully, it reminds me of Paul who wrote, for me to die is gain, so I will be in Christ, or to live is again, I'll be, I, will, uh, I will walk with Christ. So for me to live or die is to be with Christ. And the same attitude we see with Daniel and his friends. God, you are faithful. That's okay. I trust in you. Whatever happens, I'm with you. You are with me. They have this confidence in them. And with this, we will move on to chapter 7. And yes, God delivers Daniel supernaturally from this lion's den. There's not even a scratch. Bible records that there is not even a scratch on Daniel. And, you know, in fact, Daniel may be, um, though he was in the lion's den, maybe he was in great peace than the king. You know, the king had sleepless night putting Daniel into the prison. And he acknowledges that Daniel, 
you know he acknowledges when daniel uh, you know was not armed by lion and he was very happy to receive him and exalt him than others and he put the others into the lines and who plotted against daniel the pit which others dug for daniel they had to finally fall into the same pit so in chapter 7 we see another dream and uh, it's daniel this time and you know understand the dream until an angelic messenger explains it to him and we see a series of four beasts uh, the one like a lion like a bear and uh, like a winged leopard and each of these symbolizes an arrogant kingdom and last of all is a super beast identified as a really evil empire and it has lot of horns and a common symbol for king is the old in the old testament the horns and there's one specific horn who's an image of an arrogant king who exalts himself above god and persecuted god's people and now they are symbolized by a figure called the son of man <clears throat> who is the image for both god's covenant people but also their king from the line of david but then all of a sudden god who's called the ancient of days comes and he sets up his throne and he destroys and uh, he destroys all the super beast and he exalts the son of man on the cloud where he comes up to sit at god's right hand and share in god's rule over the nation and we also see that when we look back the stories in the first half we see that the three stories of faithfulness despite the persecution they are meant to offer hope to god suffering people among the nation and they suffer because human kingdom have rebelled against god and become the beast in nature so these visions encourage us to be patient that god's people are to wait for him to bring his kingdom and rule over our world and vindicate his sufferings from people so in chapter 8 we see that daniel has another vision about the final two beast in chapter 7 but this time they are symbolized by a ram who we told is in a image of empire of medes and persians and then by a goat who is a image of ancient greece and out of goat comes a whole bunch of horns and symbolizes the evil king from chapter 7 so we will be in detail covering this in the book of eschatology um Mm-hmm. Okay. So we see a lot of series of visions and dreams here which we will be studying in detail and when we are in second year when you are studying the subject eschatology so now the book of daniel has been designed to offer us the hope to all the future generation of god's people so um, it did so in the days of the Ant- antiochus empire and it had ever since and this is why jesus could use the imag- imaginary from imagery from uh, the daniel to describe and confront the oppressive leaders he confronted in jerusalem and yes and this is why even john the visionary who wrote the revelation could adapt daniel's vision and apply them to rome of his day and also all future oppressive empires and so the point here in the book of daniel is that all generation of readers can find your a pattern and a promise to them yes where the human and their kingdom become uh, you know there's a pattern of human beings and their kingdom became a violent beast but when they uh, glorify the uh, when they glorified in their own power they were uh, re- uh, they were uh, uh, you know they they saw the power which was destroyed by god 
and when they don't acknowledge and give glory to god they were destroyed by their pride but daniel also holds out a promise that one day god will confront these violent behavior people who are like beast and he will rescue his world his people by bringing his kingdom over all the nations so we see jeremiah also gave a message of hope that this exile will not last long but only 70 year period and then we also see ezekiel giving a hope and giving a, a the millennium the god's kingdom come on earth and we see also daniel being the prophet he is also reminded about um, and jeremiah's prophecy of that 70 year exile and he prays initially when we study the book of daniel in the first chapter we see that uh, daniel is reminded of the 70 year exile and he prays and asks god god 70 year period is over we need to go back to our promised land but then god says daniel daniel people have not changed people are continuing to sin again and again so i had to extend it's not like god had to extend it's the sin nature the consequence of this sin has extended this exile for 70 times 7 or approximately 490 years and now the book of daniel ends with a message of hope he says god will rescue us he will rescue us and because he is a faithful god there's always a plan and then he talks about the end times well daniel and his friends uh, how we can apply what we can learn from this book other than the revelation of the end times we see that daniel and his friends were praying they had to pray nature with them they prayed together and whenever they prayed together god showed up god revealed things to them god was with them god supported them god revealed the secrets the hidden things to them when they prayed when they seek god wholeheartedly so when we see god we see god showing up the invisible god will become visible in our life his tangible presence will become visible in in our life in our journey with the lord yes uh, we uh, yes we need to ask we need to seek god whenever we ask and seek god god answers us maybe we would have never experienced others asking or praying like that before but don't stop yourself from asking Peter, just like how in the New Testament we saw uh, uh, Jesus walk on water. Yes, the other disciples were very scared. But what made Peter to ask Jesus, Jesus, can I walk the way you walk? And Jesus said, yes, walk. And it was only Peter who could walk on water. Because he was the only one who asked so it is important for you and I to ask God. Just like how Daniel asked God. We need to ask God. Maybe no one else have, uh, have experienced that trial like how Daniel did. Maybe the trial that we go through may be new. A situation, circumstance that we are put in may be new. But despite our situation, despite our uh, circumstances, let's seek and ask God because he is a savior who died on the cross and he will rescue us no matter what how dangerous situation it could be god has the power to rescue us his hand is not short to save us to hold us to lift us up from that pit from that situation and his ears are not deaf to your your prayer and his eyes are not blind to watch us over because he calls us as the apple of our eyes he watches over us God is a God who sees us. He sees us. God who saw Agar and blessed her. Same God will see us. Despite of our shortcoming, despite of our weakness, just like the lost sheep who just cried out to the shepherd. The shepherd left the 99 and he ran. Same God, he can come to you and me even in the lion's den, even in the fiery furnace, wherever we are, he is faithful enough to be with us. So with this, I'll end this 
section on the book of Daniel and I'll leave it open to our class if you would like to share or add anything that we discussed pertaining to the book of Daniel or any experience that you had in your life that you would like to share. Please feel free to share it because that will strengthen us, each of us in the class as we study this book together. Thank you and I leave it open to our class. These are some of the highlights that we covered in the class today. With this, I will. Yes, Divya, please go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor Dana. Thank you so much. It was such a beautiful session. And um, uh, one verse that I really love in this book of Daniel is uh, Daniel 1, verse 8. Uh, which says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the Amen. king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Uh, so that that was like, um, it is uh, something that he did intentionally. It's not something yes. that just happened like that. But we Amen. might be, uh, 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 Daniel and his friends were in such a difficult culture. It was, everything was against them. But, you know, that courage uh, and the resolute, uh, you know, to stand for God, that's really remarkable. And uh, I pray that, yeah, each one of us have that resolute as well as the courage. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, that's why God rewarded them, because in, intentionally they stepped intentionally they held on to God and his promise and we see how God rewarded them. Anyone else would like to share? Um, I like the last verse, yes. uh, Daniel chapter 12 verse 13, after revealing so much, uh, so much of God's mysteries to Daniel, uh, we read, as for you, go your way to the end, then you will enter into rest and rise again for your allotted portion at the end Amen. of the age. Such a um, hope giving was. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. It is a message of hope that we receive. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, please, Brother Lubega. I also learned two things one, pride. Uh, it actually shows that whether you are godly or ungodly, God hates the proud. He will always bring his judgment to the proud people. Number two, I also learn that uh, God is always near the prayerful. For instance, you see how those guys who are praying, and it actually means that whether you are in your own land or in the foreign land, whether a free or a captive, when you live a prayerful life, God will always answer. That's what I had Amen. to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, brother. Amen. Amen. Anyone else would like to share? Elisha, you would like to add Lyndon, Ruben, anyone from the class you would like to add before we could end the session? Nikki. Okay. Can I request one of us to please pray and dismiss us from this class? Yes, sorry, not the person to pray. <laughs> okay, okay, no problem. Uh, yeah, Roslyn, you can go ahead, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, before praying, ma'am, I would like to share uh, Daniel yes. 11, 32. They that know their God shall do great exploits. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe because Daniel knew his God, uh, he yes. could... He could do what he could do, like you know, he could stand for God and um, face the trials and come out victoriously. So it is uh, for every individual. It is very important to know the God, the, the God we serve, and um, thereby.
do great exploits for him in the kingdom of god amen amen, amen. thank you so much for sharing that roslin yes thank you and yeah. yes you can go ahead and pray yeah. thank you lord jesus wonderful father we thank you lord for this wonderful session for this powerful session lord even as even as uh, uh, we uh, the scripture which i just shared lord father god we want to know you father god lord help us to know you father god the way you want us to know you lord so that mighty god we may the purpose that we are on this earth lord god that purpose will be fulfilled lord in our lives through our lives father god that we may live according to your will father god and, and do mighty exploits for you lord Father, I commit each and every one of us into your mighty hands, Lord. Lord, every purpose that you have for their lives, for our lives, Lord God, may it be fulfilled, mighty God, yes. Lord, and um, that we may not lack in any good thing, Father God. Lord, I thank you and I bless you, I praise you. I also thank you, Lord, for our dear pastor, Father God. Thank you for her obedience to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. I pray, anoint her mightily, Lord, and use her mightily for your kingdom. Daddy God, thank you, Lord. May she be a blessing to, to millions out there, Lord God. And we are glad that we are one among you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, just stay online. I'll just end this recording and I want to discuss. Uh, yeah. Stop the recording.